Y'all, I still can't believe all of these snacks exist inside Disney World, and they're available for you to buy and try on your next trip. You never know what you're gonna find, and we're pulling back the curtain on some seriously ridiculous snacks today here on DFV Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. We're about to discuss my favorite Disney subject possibly ever, snacks. So Disney has hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of snacks for you to choose from, but a handful of those might blow your mind or at the very least leave you scratching your head. So today we're gonna talk about the most ridiculous snacks across the parks and resorts and Disney Springs in case you either wanna add them to your tasting itinerary or avoid them. Some of the ridiculous snacks that are going to be featured today we do consider to be our all-time favorites, but if you're looking for an official top 10 snacks list for each of the parks that you can refer back to during your 2024 vacation, go ahead and scan the QR code you see on the screen now. Or head to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash best snacks for a free list and those snack maps. That's right, we made snack maps for you of our personal must-haves. We are starting with the funnest part of today's video, which is the ridiculously weird snacks. So sometimes Disney World comes up with this snack and we're not quite sure what they were thinking in the brainstorming room while conjuring it up, but it somehow still works, sometimes. Some of the strangest items, however, are the limited time options, like what you're gonna find in Disney Springs. When plain vanilla and chocolate ice cream just won't do it for you, you need to go to Salt and Straw, because where else can you find ice cream flavored with bugs and potato salad? Nope, seriously, Salt and Straw has had both of these flavor options highlighted as their many monthly rotating flavors. The Don Bugito's Creepy Crawly Critters featured during the month of October. This is, they usually come back every October, by the way, so get ready. This is made with matcha ice cream and coconut candied mealworms and chocolate covered crickets. I wasn't kidding you when I told you we'd be exploring some ridiculous snacks. Meanwhile, the chocolate potato salad ice cream featured during August is made with a spiced mustard ice cream seasoned with paprika, celery seed, and dill, plus potato chip cookies and a ripple of chocolate fudge. Okay, so think about it. There's no way that these flavor combinations can be any good, right? And yet, no matter how bizarre they sound, Salt and Straw always somehow seems to pull off their bizarre Frankenstein-like concoctions in the end. I can remember when I first had their turkey-flavored ice cream for their Thanksgiving lineup, and I was just bowled over. It was so good. That said, I'm not jumping at the opportunity to eat bugs and ice cream again, but the flavor isn't bad. It's just the thought of it that makes me feel a little queasy. There are so many other out there flavors featured all year round at Salt and Straw, and also some very, very delicious sounding flavors too. They do a great job over there. So make sure to take a look at the menu before you head that way. And by the way, Salt and Straw is on both coasts. You got it in Disney Springs and Disney World and Downtown Disney and Disneyland. Now, Gideon's Bakehouse also has some really interesting seasonal flavors, but we're gonna be talking about that bakery shop quite a bit today. So let's talk about one that doesn't seem to get a whole lot of love on the regular, Sprinkles. So Sprinkles serves up its famous handcrafted cupcakes and slow churned ice cream and homemade cookies, but not all of Sprinkles cupcakes are gonna serve up familiar flavors. Occasionally, you can get boozy cupcakes here like the margarita cupcake, or if you're feeling really adventurous, be sure to head over to the Cupcake Bakery when it has the Flame and Hot Cheetos Cupcake, which we found last summer and has been a returning flavor a few times. And if you didn't think the seasonal flavors were weird enough here, you can also order your cupcakes in a weird way too, either in person or through a cupcake ATM located just outside the building. Just don't skip over the sprinkles during your next Disney Springs visit if you're looking for a dessert that you've never tried before. Now, another quick note here, sprinkles is a chain, so you may have one close to you. I have one here in Dallas, so if you see us to talk about their ridiculous seasonal flavors, you might have them close to you as well. But hold on, Disney Springs has some rather wacky savory options that you can try too, like the Saganaki on fire over at Wine Bar George, because who doesn't want food on fire? The Saganaki is made with Vlahotiri cheese. It's very hard to say. Vlahotiri. We got it? Okay, but the ingredients do not stop there because when you order this app, a server's gonna pour Metoxa on it table side and then set it on fire. The Saganaki is worth ordering for the presentation alone, though I will say the creamy and gooey melty cheese as a result of said presentation 
is absolutely incredible. It's one of my favorite appetizers in all of Disney World, so I do highly recommend it. And since we're on the subject of weird yet savory creations, how about we mention a snack kiosk that's not here just yet, but we already know is gonna blow our minds with some interesting recipes. Blue Ribbon Corn Dogs are coming to Disney's Boardwalk Inn Resort in the near future. Now, this isn't a new snack place for us, because we've tried these Blue Ribbon Corn Dogs over at Disneyland before. By the way, the sprinkles at Disneyland has been closed, so you can't get sprinkles anymore in downtown Disney, but you obviously can still get it at Disney Springs. Anyway, back to Blue Ribbon. And much like the seasonal options you can find at Salt and Straw and Sprinkles, the Disneyland Blue Ribbon Corn Dog location has given us a sneak peek into the innovative seasonal corn dogs that we can expect to see pop up in the Disney World bubble too, like the Mexican street corn dog, the Christmas corn dog made with turkey, panko breadcrumbs, and served with cranberry dipping sauce, the giant jalapeno pepper corn dog, and even a golden dragon corn dog too, which comes with two unique dipping sauces, sriracha aioli and sweet Thai chili. While most of the corn dog flavors are still up in the air and shrouded in secrecy, we do know about one infamous corn dog that will be available to order once this place opens, and that's the pickle corn dog. For some, this might be an atrocity, but others might be absolutely fascinated by the creation. The pickle corn dog is just what it sounds like, a hot dog inside a pickle, dipped in batter, covered in panko breadcrumbs, and fried. And it's served with a peanut butter dipping sauce. So there's a lot going on here, and we are interested to see what you think. We have reviewed the pickle corn dog. It is on the site if you wanna see. <laughs> But this place is going to open at the Boardwalk Inn sometime this year. We're seeing progress, at least. It's not just the deluxe resorts that have the most interesting and innovative snack combos, though. Over at Everything Pop, inside Disney's Pop Century Resort, you can get that classic, iconic cheesecake mixed with a rainbow. The tie-dye cheesecake is a psychedelic treat featuring multicolored cheesecake layered on top of red velvet cake. Who remembers when this was actually a wedge of cheesecake versus like in one of those little Disney dessert cups? Ups, right? That was when Pop Century first opened years and years and years ago for those of us who are old enough to remember it. Now, don't let this colorful Play-Doh vibe fool you. This dessert looks more adventurous than it actually is. In reality, it's just a nice, simple, delicious cheesecake that pairs well with the flavoring of red velvet. So if you want something a little bizarre without feeling like you're stepping too far out of the box, then this little goodie might help you bridge that gap just perfectly. Moving on to the ridiculously cheap Disney World snacks. And by cheap, we mean good cheap, not bad cheap. <laughs> We're used to Disney being a really expensive place, so it's a really strange feeling when our sense of sticker shock is for a whole other reason. Many of our favorite snacks really won't cost you that much to enjoy, especially many of the snacks you can find across the World Showcase Pavilion in Epcot. At Joy of Tea, inside the China Pavilion, you're gonna find more than just tea. This is like a hidden gem little spot, so if you haven't been over to Joy of Tea in China, you definitely need to. For just over five bucks, you can pick up an order of two egg rolls, which are crispy, crunchy, warm, and stuffed with pork. Unfortunately, there isn't a vegetarian option for this snack, despite them being very cabbage forward, but if you're cool with eating pork and you need something light to hold you over until your next meal, these will do the trick. Now in the Germany Pavilion over at Summerfest, there's actually a super satisfying sweet treat that you can find for under five dollars and it's the pretzel bread pudding we can't believe that this hasn't been like jacked up in price yet the pretzel bread pudding is made with what we think is leftover pretzels like how traditional bread pudding is made with leftover bread and then topped off with caramel butter scotch and a white cream sauce the caramel is the biggest standout flavor for this treat, while the white cream sauce is a whole lot more subtle, but for under five bucks, you're getting a really dense, moist, flavorful cake for not a whole lot of dough, <laughs> bakery pun intended. Also, you can't get this anywhere else. I personally haven't seen it anywhere else in Disney World, have you? And then there's the Les All Boulangerie Patisserie, which gives you a whole heap of affordable snacky options inside the France Pavilion. You can get that croissant jambon fromage, which is a whole meal for $6.50. The chocolate eclair is $6.00. The apple crumble pastry is about five bucks and that full baguette, that full giant baguette that was just baked this morning for only four dollars. And that's it. Seriously, Leal is the place to visit if you want to try a lot of different snacks among your group without worrying about breaking the bank. 
Now, I know we already talked about a bread pudding snack, but I got to let you in on another bread pudding snack that could actually end up saving you a lot of money in the end, like a whole lot. And this very snack can be found over at Banana Cabana inside Disney's Caribbean Beach Resort. The pineapple coconut bread pudding at Banana Cabana is served with this velvety, creamy caramel sauce. Plus, it also comes with a side of vanilla ice cream. So what's so special about this bread pudding that's going to end up saving you the hard-earned money? Well, the former chef from Ohana, you know, the place with the other bread pudding we all obsess over, created this recipe too when he moved over to Caribbean Beach. So if you wanted to just order dessert and skip over the steep $62 price tag for a whole Ohana meal, you can get the same bread pudding at Banana Cabana for just $10. Now, yes, you can get Ohana bread pudding over at Tambu Lounge at Polynesian Village Resort, but it's going to cost you more than that too. Keep in mind that you will We'll have to ask about this dessert though since it's not directly listed on the banana cabana menu sometimes are we ready to move over to the ridiculously giant desserts of course we are all right who knew that a disney world snack could fill you up this much if you're looking for a more substantial snack option or if you want a snack you can easily split among your group these are the ones the dfb team and i tend to gravitate towards first up on the list is cookies really, really, really big cookies that are worthy of a cookie monster-like appetite. So even before the opening of the Disney Springs location, Gideon's Bakehouse was famous among Orlando locals for creating incredible, fully loaded, nearly half pound cookies, including the triple chocolate chip, the pistachio toffee chocolate chip, and their famous coffee cake cookie. Gideon's also has ginormous cake slices too that some of our team members enjoy even more than the cookies themselves because of their super sweet frostings and rich flavors. Now, Gideon's cookies and cakes are very, very difficult to eat in one sitting because of that super sweet, dense, just sheer cookie size. When I get Gideon's cookies, I tend to bring them home and I put them in the freezer <laughs> and I, I cut them up and I eat them like one quarter at a time. And I can handle some very, very sweet stuff. So the fact that I have to do that may give you an implication of what might happen to you. And those cakes are so huge, they are absolutely shareable between at least two people and potentially more. But now it seems Gideon's has some other giant cookie competition it's up against in Disney Springs, since the new Summer House on the Lake restaurant also sells rather massive cookies at its attached cookie bar. The cookies here are the size of your hand. They're giant with lots of different flavors to choose from, like lemon, crispy rice chocolate chip, a sugar cookie topped with baby pink frosting, the fudge bomb, and a birthday cake flavor too. Personally, I think we're still Team Gideon's Bakehouse for this one, but if you're a cookie fan and you just want a big, cheap snack without the multi-hour wait that Gideon's might present, then this could still be a great spot for you. And you can just walk up and get those. You don't have to have a reservation at the restaurant. Meanwhile, over at Jock Lindsay's Hangar Bar, also inside Disney Springs, you can get your group the Air Pirates Cargo Loaded Pretzel. Now, this jumbo app is loaded with prosciutto, sliced brats, artisan pepperoni, smoked cheddar, black diamond cheddar, which is my favorite, caraway pickles, spicy mustard, and beer cheese fondue, also my favorite, all served within a large, giant pretzel. Even shared between friends, this can easily be a meal in and of itself, so don't fill up on drinks just yet. And if you're looking for a substantial and substantially sweet breakfast inside Magic Kingdom, we're always big fans of the big, big, warm cinnamon rolls from Gaston's Tavern. These cinnamon rolls always come out fresh, topped with ooey gooey icing. And sure, there's totally enough there to share, but I don't blame you if you want to keep it all for yourself instead. And if you want to make this snack even better, don't forget to ask for extra icing on the side. Yeah, there's already a lot of icing on this one, but come on, you're on vacation. Go ahead and live a little. By the way, we've got a step-by-step -step with photos recipe on our site to make these cinnamon rolls. They were originally the Main Street Bakery cinnamon rolls, but then when New Fantasyland opened in 2012, they moved over to Gaston's and got a slight little maple flavor to them to make them a little bit different. But these have been iconic in Disney World since before time existed. So definitely try these out. And if you're not going to Disney anytime soon, head to our site and get that step-by-step -step recipe done by the amazing Jessica, who knows how to do everything in the kitchen and used to be like a professional baker so she's given you a lot of extra tips and tricks for that one too so it's like having a little bakery master class on that particular post and now for a snack you absolutely cannot and should not conquer all by yourself here's the whole kitchen sink available at beaches and cream inside disney's beach club resort this giant sundae is made for at least four people and includes every single flavor of ice cream they have on the menu as well as every single topping the restaurant has to offer and a whole can of whipped 
cream. A whole can! I hope some of you did that with me. Anyway, you can also get the chocolate lovers or Neapolitan version of this sundae if you don't like your mint chocolate chip ice cream kind of messing with all the other flavors. Now, even if you don't get the kitchen sink, Beaches and Cream has a lot more big ice cream options to choose from, including their specialty shakes, which can be topped off with a full cupcake or a full brownie, you know, just in case you weren't sugar loaded enough with the ice cream on its own. And of course, that No Way Jose, which is one of my very, 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 very favorite Sundays in all of Disney World. Now, we know there are so many great and interesting snacks all around Disney World, which is why we've reviewed nearly every snack available on the scene to write that series of DFB guides all about them. Check out our DFB Guide Everything bundle over on the dfbstore.com website for all the details you need to plan your snacking and spending, and make sure to type in code YouTube for an extra discount toward your total guidebook purchases. That's how you can support us here at DFB and also get tons of information about every single snack in Walt Disney World. Okay, moving on to the ridiculously controversial snacks. Most of the time, the DFB team can agree on things, especially when it comes to snacks, but then there are those ones that split us down the middle, making it hard to declare whether they're a must-have or a must-skip. So we're gonna let you decide that for us. First up on this list, let's talk about even more weird stuff that ruffles our feathers, like donut sandwiches. Places like Everglazed in Disney Springs or Eight Spoon Cafe in Animal Kingdom have donut sandwich options that marry those salty, sweet ingredients to create one super flavorful snack. Eight Spoon Cafe has that jelly pulled pork donut, while Everglazed has the option to upgrade their regular sandwiches, like the grilled cheese, into donut sandwiches for just a dollar more. As I mentioned, some of us here on the team think these combinations are brilliant, while others just can't get behind the potential stomach ache that's in store for them after they throw a heaping pile of fried sugar into their otherwise typical sandwichy snack. But personally, I think it's a fun and innovative way of adding some variety to these options without pushing the envelope too terribly far and feeling like you jumped off the deep end. I love a sweet savory. Then there are those items that aren't necessarily strictly for breakfast, but we tend to gravitate toward them around breakfast time, like the Pongu Lumpia, Pongu Pongu, and Animal Kingdom. This is a fried spring roll with a pineapple cream cheese filling. Now this checks off all the boxes for some who love sweet fried goodies, tropical flavors, and big globs of cream cheese. Plus it's a snack you can pick up for under $4, a steal. But for others, this is a treat they're gonna skip over real fast, especially if they're opposed to any or all of those components. Now this might shock some of y'all, but our team is also pretty split when it comes to Joffrey's coffee kiosks too. Joffrey's can be a great alternative to the park Starbucks location, but some folks consider those specialty drinks to be way too sweet to be considered coffee worthy. But Joffrey's does sell regular black coffee and cold brew too, if you're looking to cut down on the sugary syrups significantly. Now let's be real here, all the food in Galaxy's Edge at Hollywood Studios is kind of controversial. People either love or hate the flavors of that blue and green milk from the milk stand. They think the cold brew black calf from Katsaka's kettle is delicious or has a weird cream cheesy aftertaste. Consider the Katsaka's outpost mixed popcorn to be a must try or a must always avoid. Avoid, and the only right answer to that one is avoid, in my humble opinion, but you may be different. And you can't get behind the overpriced pre-mixed cocktails at Oga's Cantina, or they can't miss out on them because they're wonderfully weird and the fuzzy tauntauns tongue numbing properties entertain us each and every time we try it. Now I could keep going, but you get the idea. The food in Batu is a little bit different in the best and worst ways possible. So make sure to study up on what the flavors and ingredients actually are in each of these snacks before getting them just for the novelty sake. Again, all of these are gonna be in our snack guides as well if you wanna see our full reviews. And of course we got full reviews on the blog as well. Now this next controversial snack was a last minute entry for the team that I had to include because I honestly never thought it was argument worthy, but apparently it is. And that's snacks that are upgraded with scoops of ice cream, right? Like I always thought that naturally made snacks better, but apparently not everyone agrees. One of our reporters mentioned that she's not really a fan of hot cookie hour over at Gideon's Bakehouse, which happens twice daily from 2 to 3 p.m. and 7 to 8 p.m. And that'll add a scoop of vanilla ice cream on top of your warm chocolate chip cookie. For me, that sounds awesome. But for our reporter, she said the ice cream quickly freezes the top of the cookie and makes the whole thing hard to eat, so it's not the gooey treat you were expecting it to be. Other DFB members chimed in, talking about how ice cream on treats can also make them too soggy, especially when you're trying to enjoy them on a hot day and they melt way too quickly. Cut to the pineapple upside down cake Dole Whip from Aloha Island Magic Kingdom, one of my favorites. 
Not to mention some places will charge you extra for that scoop of ice cream, making your snack more expensive than it would have been without it. Cut to the already massive and pricey funnel cakes at Epic Eats and Hollywood Studios. If you're someone who considers ice cream to be an enhancement for a treat, great. But before you automatically order something with ice cream topping it off, see if there's an option to order it without the ice cream if that's not your jam, or depending on the restaurant, see if you can just order the ice cream on the side. Our next group of ridiculous snacks are the ones that are ridiculously underrated. No, I don't think you understand. These Disney World snacks simply do not get enough love, and I want to change that. In the midst of all the snack options you can get around Epcot, including snacks from the festival booths as well as the quick service restaurants, don't forget about these snacks you can pick up at the World Showcase. I know, I never recommend pre-packaged snacks, usually, but when it comes to World Showcase pavilions, the snacks you're going to find inside these gift shops are going to be those authentic international ones that you can't typically find at your local grocery store. We're talking jammy Dodgers from the UK, coffee crisps from Canada, a variety of chip flavors like spicy crayfish and octopus from China, crunchy crab bits from Japan. Sometimes those packaged snacks can be just as satisfying and fun to try as the other Epcot treats. Plus, you don't have to eat them right then and there. You can always purchase them now and enjoy them later. That's the beauty of prepackaged goodies. Now, if you've been watching my most recent videos, then you already know how excited I am about the prime rib sliders that have returned to Cruise Cup and Disney. Disney's Yacht Club Resort, and I'm just here to remind you that you need to try them too, if only to make sure they don't disappear on us again. These are served as two slider sandwiches stuffed with sliced prime rib meat accompanied by a side of house-made chips and cups of horseradish cream and au jus. And remember, you are right next to Yachtsman Steakhouse, so you know this prime rib is impeccable. Now, these are pricey as a snack, around 20 bucks, so you're either going to want to share them as a snack or treat them like a whole meal. But either way, if you're a prime rib fiend, you're doing yourself a disservice to not know these prime rib sliders exist and that you can easily order them the next time you're in the Yacht Club area. Now, note that Cruise Cup will open in the afternoon, so you're not going to be able to go at like noon and get these. Aim for 3, 4, 5. 5 p.m. Now, while Swan and Dolphin might not be in that ring of resorts where Boardwalk Inn and Yacht and Beach Club reside, it's still within walking distance of Epcot too. Meaning, if you got the time during your Disney vacation, or if you're planning on staying at Swan and Dolphin, you're only a hop, skip, and a jump away from one of the best Sundays ever, the Coco Loco Shake at the Fountain on the Dolphin side of this resort duo. Okay, so pretty much all the shakes at the Fountain we consider to be on par with some of our favorite shakes from Beaches and Cream, but the Coco Loco Shake kicks things up a few notches since it's it's made with whipped cream, chocolate ice cream, caramel cappuccino ice cream, malted milk balls, and chocolate caramel drizzle. This is creamy and delicious, and even if you're not a coffee fan, the coffee isn't so overpowering that you're not going to enjoy it, since the chocolate is the most prominent flavor here. But if you're looking for a more coffee-forward shake, keep in mind you can have the fountain build any of these shakes however you like, so you might want to try this with strictly cappuccino ice cream and leave the chocolate behind. We've already talked about so many Disney Spring sweets, from cupcakes to cookies to donuts, but what if I told you there was a Disney Springs bakery you're overlooking that does all of those treats and does them vegan and gluten-free? Erin McKenna's Bakery NYC is a fairly small quick service restaurant that specializes in sweets and treats made to serve people with gluten, dairy, egg, and soy sensitivities, the health-minded, and most importantly, allergic kids who are often unable to indulge. While not everything totally knocks our socks off here, many of the recipes have left an impression on us in a great way. Personally, we're big fans of the Veggie Bomb, which is like a biscuit but gives us major veggie pizza vibes, and the Vanilla Dipped Cookie Sandwich. Next, we're making our way to those ridiculously expensive Disney snacks. We already talked about the ridiculously cheap ones, so let's take a 180 and talk about those pricey ones that you may still want to order regardless. And because Disney Springs seems to be the hub of all things extravagantly sweet, let's start off by talking about those decorative petite cakes you can find at Amaret's Patisserie. Petite cakes at Amaret's are going to cost you the price of a meal. Not kidding. They look beautiful, but they range between $20 and $22 each. Amaret's often releases limited time petite cakes for new seasons or special events or brand new movies that come out, but it's not just their designs that change, it's their flavors that change. So before you drop 20 bucks on a cake design that you think is absolutely adorable, make sure you're 100% gonna like the flavor combos making up that cake because there are a lot of flavors in these. So make sure you read the sign and you know what flavors there are in case you have pickier eaters or kids in your group who may not love all of those flavors kind of together. Think trifle. 
So if you walk a little further into Disney Springs, right on past the World of Disney gift shop, you'll see and smell Ghirardelli's Soda Fountain. This is another top tier ice cream shop featuring specialty sundaes and shakes and even cocoa drinks. But this is a hidden money pit for your wallet. These specialty sundaes are really good, but they're also unbelievably expensive. Typically, they range around $16 to $19 per sundae, depending on what you order. So again, you're going to want to look at the flavor combos here and decide if you're cool with paying that much for an ice cream sundae, or if you'd rather get a frozen treat that's a little more atypical, but cheaper than what Ghirardelli offers, like the ones from Salt and Straw or even the rotating Dole Whip flavors you can find at Swirls on the Water. Water, which is at Disney Springs too. We always love the swirls on the water Dole Whip flights. Those are so fun. Now, we only briefly mentioned Oga's Cantina before, but how about we head back over there, yeah? While Oga's is way more known for their creative Star Wars themed drinks, they also have a super teeny tiny menu of snacks too. And by teeny tiny, I mean they have two. One of those options is the Hapabor sampler made with cured and roasted meats, cheese, and pork cracklins, aka pork rinds. I know that shareable charcuterie-like options can be pretty pricey, but having to pay 22 bucks for the Hapabor sampler, which is probably my least favorite of the charcuterie options out there, is just ridiculous. Now, this has gotten way better than it was at the beginning when they used to just put string cheese on this thing. But still, 22 bucks is a stretch for what you're currently getting. So if you're looking for a charcuterie platter and you don't want to pay too, too much, head over to Baseline Tap House where you can get that California cheese and charcuterie plate for 13 bucks. The handcrafted charcuterie board over at Geyser Point Bar and Grill in Disney's Wilderness Lodge is a favorite. It's 18. And of course, the giant Air Pirates cargo loaded pretzel that we talked about earlier is $22.50, but it's going to feed a lot of folks. Anyone else feeling snacky? Because I'm definitely feeling snacky. If you're on the hunt for even more Disney snacks, don't forget to check out our free top 10 Disney park snacks over at DisneyFoodBlog.com slash best snacks. I love that we have maps for you in there. They are so cute and so fun and honestly frameable all on their own. So I hope you go check them out. Thanks for listening, everyone. And thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.